Where's my money? Where's my money? The Commonwealth Bank mystery, $90,000, how a young couple's campaign for answers about what happened has badly backfired as loved ones share their theory about what has happened. Now, my heart actually goes out to this couple. What happened is that they're a young couple they were looking to purchase their first home. They had scrimped and saved 90, 96000 I believe it was, from memory. Um, they're saying 90000 but I'm pretty sure it's closer to $96,000 for a deposit. Now, don't get me wrong, that's a shit ton of a deposit. I guarantee they were putting down a 20% so they could avoid mortgage lenders insurance. There's no, I don't, I genuinely don't believe they were buying a $960,000 house. Um, but basically, while they were overseas on a pre, pre-arranged holiday so that they could uh, go to a wedding, they had settlement of their property. Now, what they tried to do was transfer the money from their Commonwealth Bank account to a Bank of Melbourne account. Not uncommon, happens every day when you do conveyancing transactions. I have clients do it fairly frequently when we have to do property sales for settlement or purchases, settlements or sales. You transfer the funds between banks so that it's there for the mortgagee to know that the funds are there and they're happy to lend the balance. Happens all the time. In this instance, the individuals tried to transfer it to the Bank of Melbourne at one instance. It bounced back to the Commonwealth Bank. They try to transfer it again. It bounced back. Now, apparently there were some issues with the names on the on the account, whatever else. It hadn't been approved yet from the Bank of Melbourne side. So the money should have went back into their Commonwealth Bank account. After the second time, the money disappeared. And the bank, the Commonwealth Bank, are saying that the money never existed. Despite the fact that the couple have receipts showing that the money was in the account, should have been back in the account, and now all of a sudden it's just disappeared. Uh, A couple who say they lost their life savings in a bungled Commonwealth Bank transfer are in hiding after their emotional plea for help has turned sour. And that's also pissed me off a little bit as well, because as so happens, social media has turned on them, or at least a segment of it. And personally, I believe that that is not necessarily genuine people. I'm paranoid. So it's literally, oh, I, um, my back's hurting. Um, having dealt with certain clientele and certain issues with certain banks here in Australia, I can definitely say they will play dirty and I would not be surprised in the slightest if this started out as a result of them engaging a PR firm. Um, you can't turn a zero into a one without a confirmed command. Well, uh, Ellie Houston, 21, and her, po- uh, her partner, Trey Murphy, 23, say they transferred $90,000 from their account to a Bank of Melbourne account on June 30 before it vanished into thin air. Miss Houston claimed in an interview with Radio 3AW on Monday that the money initially bounced back to their original account before eventually disappearing altogether. They then appeared on television in a further attempt to try and recover the missing funds. Sources have told the Daily Mail the media blitz had been recommended by the couple's lawyer after they exhausted all efforts to obtain answers about the mysterious transactions from the banks. And I see this. I have seen this in practice. They will just stonewall. If if they think that they are at fault or if they don't want to acknowledge something has gone wrong, they will just not get in contact with you or not allow you to contact them. It will literally... I can understand why, of all things, their lawyer has had to recommend saying, let's go to the media because we've exhausted all other options. They won't talk to us. They won't acknowledge the fault or anything like that. So we're going to have to try and twist them a little bit here. Um, okay, so this is the audio from... We sent $90,000 back to Bank of Melbourne. We flew out to Bali on the 5th of July. And on the 7th of July, the money bounced back again into our Commonwealth Bank account which from there we couldn't then send any money over internationally because of that high sum. So we left it. We had to pay a $2,500 fee for late settlement because we weren't going to be able to settle the land internationally. Yeah. We come home from Bali on the 20th. We went straight into Commonwealth to settle this land and transfer the money to Bank of Melbourne. No money in our account, 75 cents. And they can't tell us where it's gone, nothing. We also recognise <laughs> Commonwealth Bank customers are still not making mortgage payments. <laughs> I'm shocked. 
Uh, the fallout from those media appearances was evident on Thursday when the Daily Mail tried to speak to shattered Mr. Murphy. The tradies' parents advised that their son was so unwell from the stress and anxiety of his ordeal that he could not get out of bed. I, I can understand that, having almost $100,000 up and disappear. And th- this is why I have so many issues with the fact that they're trying to push us towards going cashless. Because imagine if the pieces of paper or what's on your screen are the only evidence you have that any money is in your account at all. If you are unable to physically hand over cash or anything like that, this can happen to anybody. All it takes is someone slipping a finger or someone slip of a finger or someone being malicious, committing fraud on the other end of the bank, and they can say they're squeaky clean. Shit happens all the time. This is not okay. Uh, who do you sue? Your bank, the other bank? Yeah, cashless will be... No, it's not would be a disaster. Cashless will be a disaster, Lorraine, because they're pushing so hard for it. Um, <clears throat> to have the money now and then all of a sudden it's gone missing from what he's, it seems that he's been scammed somehow, his uh, worried mum said, and to think that people now think he's the one that's lying, it's devastating. The pair had saved the substantial amount of money for a land settlement in Yarrawonga, a town located near the New South Wales Victorian border. Miss Houston claimed to it, claimed she has screenshots and receipts that show the money moved between the two accounts, but the Commonwealth Bank refuses to refund them the lost money. The couple's public campaign for answers quickly turned pear-shaped when sympathy turned to suspicion. Armchair detectives went into overdrive online as people openly speculated on what they believed had gone wrong. Sources close to the couple say the public campaign helped force Commonwealth Bank to re-engage with them. They have still had no answers as to where the money went or how they can get it back. Commonwealth Bank has said that once it went into the account he wanted it to go into, it's been transferred into someone else's account by a name he doesn't even know. So for some reason, the the money's been transferred from some account to somewhere else, and it's just gone. A spokesperson for the Commonwealth Bank said it had investigated the couple's claims and had since told Mr. Murphy that the receipt numbers he provided do not exist in CBA records. I call bullshit on that. On examiner... It... mm. On examination of the images of the receipts provided, the documents differ from genuine AB, uh, CBA receipts, and the receipt numbers do not match existing. Do, uh, the receipt numbers do not exist in CBA records. Yeah, sure, they don't. They differ from genuine CBA receipts because they're screenshots taken from within the CBA app. The statement added, Mr. Murphy contends that the balance of his account should be $96,000. Following an investigation by CBA, we've informed him that the account in question or any other account held by him did not have a balance of $96,000 at the time when the relevant transfers or the or in the 12 months prior. The account, so they've been saving up $96,000. They've got it in their account ready for settlement. And now they're saying, oh, none of the accounts that you actually own show that you've ever had $96,000 in it. That, to me, sounds like a clerical and accounting error on behalf of the bank. The account from which the transfers allegedly took place is a net net bank saver account, which only permits transfers to another CBA account and is unable to process transfers to another financial institution. Uh, Subject to receiving additional information from Mr. Murphy, CBA is willing to make further inquiries, as well as sure that's a hell of a lot of money. Friends of Mr. Murphy have backed his account and taken aim at cruel speculation that he suggested he ha- that he may be covering up some kind of secret gambling habit. Who in their right mind would drop $96,000 on a horse? It's ridiculous. Well, to be fair, gambling addicts, not necessarily in their right mind. But that's not really the point. Uh, threaten the banks. Is the $90,000 worth the reputation hit that they would take? Well... Doing this from the bank in Bali, I'd check the corruption in Bali. No, I don't believe so. I believe what... Ma- Look, there are many ways that things could have went wrong. I mean, I'm calling out the CBA here specifically because of the way that they've acted about it and because I'm not a fan of the CBA, particularly because of how they've dealt with certain clients of mine, my own personal interactions with them. I'm not a fan. Um, But... I mean, if they were doing transactions through the Commonwealth Bank app overseas, there's every chance that things were intercepted. You know, there's all kinds of things that can happen hacking-wise. But my understanding is that the funds were being transferred, not utilizing a bank in Bali. It was they were transferring funds from the CBA directly to Bank of Melbourne, just using the using their app overseas. Well, from the sounds of it, yeah, they have a withdrawal record, but that it was taken out and sent to somebody's account that has nothing to do with the couple. <laughs> Not going to lie, 95000 is cheap for a good horse. 
Yeah, but you're not going to bet 95000 on a horse, though, theoretically. <laughs> the friend of the couple said that they only went public in an effort to get the bank talking again in the hope of retrieving their life savings. The couple had been, excuse me, had been on a long planned trip to Bali when the transfer from the CBA account bounced back from the Bank of Melbourne. Both of their names weren't approved yet, according to Miss Houston. When the couple again tried to transfer the 90000 to the Bank of Melbourne account on July 4, the money bounced back to their account a few days later. As they were on holiday at Bali at the time, the couple couldn't complete the transfer, uh, couldn't transfer the money internationally and were charged a late $2,500 settlement fee. So basically, money bounced back. They've tried to transfer it to another bank twice and it's bounced back. As a result, settlement hasn't taken place. Purchaser has been, uh, sorry, the vendor has charged uh, late settlement interest and all sorts of fees. They didn't run away to Bali because of this. They went there for a wedding, so they were compelled to go there, the friend said. They'd already booked it before this. any of this happened long before, so it's just coincidence. The friend said the couple's public plea came out of sheer desperation. They wanted help and answers because they weren't getting any. They know uh, Those who know the hardworking couple insist they are the victims of a terrible crime. Either he's been hacked or the bank's account has been hacked, the friend said. Daily Mail Australia has been told that uh, Mr. Murphy worked long hours to save for the couple's dream Yarrawonga property. The money was all kept in a locked savings account, which Mr. Murphy is understood to have opened in an actual bank. These two have worked hard, something has happened, and they've gone on the advice of a lawyer to go and talk to Neil Mitchell to get it going. They wanted to get things rolling, and they did, and they've got more information this week than they've had in the last two months. Isn't that pathetic that they had to go to the media to get information from an institution who is more than happy to charge fees and is supposed to be providing some sort of... um, uh, actual service, but God forbid they should actually provide information on it. Uh, it's helped them understand that they've been scammed. The matter is set to go before the Australian Financial Complaints Authority in the hope of finally resolving the matter. Good luck. Africa can be a pain in the ass as well. Worried friends say Mr. Murphy is so distraught over the missing money, he has closed himself off from loved ones. He's not in a good place, and now it's turned negative. Oh, and look, sorry, we're not currently accepting comments on this article. They, the comments were there earlier when I read through the news article originally. I really feel for these kids. I really do. I mean, they're a young couple that have worked hard. And from what it seems that they're, yeah, exactly. Banks don't care. You're just a number to them. Mm-hmm. I understand the banks do not want to take responsibility. And giving them the runaround, I would go public too. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, this this one was some absolute BS. <laughs> 